but there was more to go. So we ventured on down to the canyon. It was on my bucket list always to do a few things, but completing the bucket list is always like people say they're eventually getting to. I'm actually trying to knock stuff out. Sunrise was fixated on my mind in every meditation that I had while I was thinking about where I was going to release. I had brought sage, crystals. I was thinking about I had even written a little note that I was going to bury in the canyon or even burn and say some words and whatnot. And I was thinking, yo, I got to be there at sunrise. There's no way that if I'm going to the Grand Canyon, I got it. I can't miss sunrise. So we did just that. Woke up at the ass crack of dawn and was like, yo, we striking out. And I was hitting 95 to get to the canyon. We got to the Grand Canyon at like 530. I didn't prepare like I should have, though. I'm thinking like, yo, the canyon's going to be chill. But this is actual nature, folks. It was windy as shit. (laughs) <laughs> if you ever go into the Grand Canyon, it is going to be extremely windy. Make sure you bring two thick jackets, a hoodie, um, even your legs. Make sure your legs are protected because that, that is no joke out there. It was no joke. And being there at sunrise made it all worth it because of the, the amount of energy that came over that Great Canyon. People talk about what the Grand Canyon looks like. You you're not going to be able to describe what the Grand Canyon looks like. The Grand Canyon looks like life. It's hard to take in 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 one frame, in one viewing. You have to literally look away and then look back. You see where people have made their own routes in the canyon and went the wrong way there, so I got to turn back around here. And you've seen the actual routes that are successful going through all of these amazing Natural, sculpted images. That place was absolutely breathtaking. In every syllable of that word. So hard to describe it because as the sun began to rise, I was filming some of the stuff that was going on. Meditating and praying, relating. And as I went throughout the day doing things, I stumbled upon a place where I felt like, all right, yeah, this is going to be it. This is where I'm about to burn my sage, take my note, and I'm about to just leave it all at the canyon. I saw this point that was off the beaten trail. I had seen it on a YouTube channel video. These guys were jumping around over there. But I I was like, yo, if I see it, I might go around it. But I happened to just, that'd be the last place that we actually stopped. And I'm surprised because we were just about to head out. But, yo, the person I was with was like, mm, let's stop right here. I'm like, cool. Saw the point and was like, yeah, I got to go to it. I climbed down to this point And I was just sitting there for a moment like, yo, what am I about to do? Because it wasn't like there was a way to get up there. I knew people that had gotten to the point, but I don't know how they got back. And I saw that you would have to jump down onto a tree, then get down and roll over. I'm like, damn, I don't want to do all that. But I did do all of that. I was determined. It was something that I needed to know about myself at that moment. So I climbed down not knowing if I was ever going to get back up, honestly. And I had seen people stuck and stranded. I didn't know if there was going to be wild dogs down there or wild animals. Even cats, big cats live in the mountains and ranges out there. So I was concerned, but I wasn't really worried about anything but getting to my release. So I climbed down. Went about 50 yards in, and immediately I felt the wind of the canyon roaring, almost tipping me over. I was not prepared. I didn't think about the fact that there was nothing blocking this crazy winds, just pushing my little body around as I'm trying to stay focused and and walk up to this point. Somebody told me about Vertico, but I wasn't really even thinking that that could happen to me. But in the moment, I looked up too quick and, whoa, I think I'm about to fall down. But instead of falling down, my spirit allowed me to just compose myself, sit down and cross my legs. Now I'm trying to focus on my breath because I don't know... If I can even do this right now, I'm shaking. I pull out my phone and I make a video. I'm thinking it's probably going to be my last video. 
But I'm calm now that I've actually been able to say my piece into the video. I didn't pull out any sage. I didn't pull out the note. No crystals. I thought about life. And how much I valued it enough to sit instead of jumping. How much I valued it enough to come down here not knowing if I was even going to be able to achieve that. I just knew I had to be in the moment right here. There was a lesson I had to learn about understanding why I do what I do and why I'm here. And this is bigger than me. The unbiased truth, what you do on a day to day basis, even though you have your own personal understanding of what's happening and how you're moving, is bigger than you. You're not a cog in a machine. You're not a brick in a wall. You are a powerful spirit that's unlocking so much if you place yourself in the right soil to grow. There was so much that I was providing to the world that I thought I wasn't getting the right return on. I'm sitting there trying to post on certain apps and I'm only getting a couple likes here, getting a couple interactions there. I'm like, damn, man, nobody fucking with me. Nobody like me. But also, it's all about going to where you actually grow and can benefit from it. You're not actually picking the right soil to grow in. I found the right soil to grow in. Now we flourishing. We own. We ready. We headed to that level. But it takes putting in the time, putting in the work, and being able to give your unbiased truth, no matter what else is going around you, setting in on your path to make sure your people are good because it's bigger than you. May you all be blessed. May you all stay focused. May you all try your best to be as amazing as you can be. Because as I stood up from that point and decided to head back up, I was like, yo, I got to start talking as soon as possible because you have no control who lives, who dies, who tells your story. If I didn't make it back from where I'm standing right now, nobody's going to be able to say what I was trying to say or get across like this. So let me go ahead and start saying what I need to say. It's hard. It's difficult to go on record about the things that you care about the most. But you need to have these conversations for the people that you love the most. I think it's important to note that as I got up, I had to crawl back <laughs> because the winds were so strong and damn near knocking me back. But as I crawled back to the actual original point of the tree that I had to jump down on, I realized that, damn, man, there is literally no way up other than jumping on this rock structure and doing some Peter Parker slash Spider-Man type work to get up there. And I was built in prime for it. So that's exactly what I did. I jumped up and made a little wall crawl, almost like the Prince of Persia, if you will. When I did the little three jumps up and I was there, I pulled myself back up. And I was free. I look back down. At the point that was about maybe 75 yards away. And the only words I could think about was ego death. And so I dubbed it ego death point. It's a very popular spot. It's got YouTube videos set up about it. <laughs> but also 